How's it going everyone? It's Lee again from Function Dynamic and in today's video what we'll be doing is covering uh, database relationships and specifically in this video what we'll be doing is covering the one-to-many relationship because this is the simplest and most common scene in any application or database. So we'll head over to the whiteboard and what a one-to-many relationship looks like. As you can imagine we have one let's say parent entity and then we have well right now we'll have <laughs> two rectangles and a pentagon uh, we have three child entities and this relationship as we can see we have one at the top and we have uh, many at the bottom in this case three although when building out an application, this isn't terribly important how many you have. As long as the application is built out to handle this relationship, it doesn't necessarily matter if you have three, if you have four, etc. So cases of this in the wild are, uh, you might see this with, uh, for example, you might have one mother having three children or you could have one team with several different members etc if we scroll down and we can take a look and look at some real examples so for example we might have uh, taking the team and members example. So we have a team over here and members here. So a team could have a name as could members. And a member could have a team right here. And both could have, well, both will have an ID of some sort. Uh, it depends on the application you use. In Zoho Creator, for example, it automatically assigns an ID, so you don't need to worry about that. In other cases, you might need to assign an ID manually if there isn't one present. So we'll want to create a link between the two, and that is done on this field right here, team. So the team entity itself isn't terribly concerned with members, or at least when you design an application, you, you're not going to have typically member IDs on the team record itself. It's going to work the other way around. And that is going to, again, happen with this field right here. And so essentially what happens is there is a lookup from team to the ID. Or rather, well, let's put the arrow the other way around. So this field essentially right here is going to be the ID of the team. And this will be the way to structure the application. So we know that for every single member, we'll have a team. All right, so here we are, we're back inside Zoho Creator. And you can see that I've made a simple application with two forms right here, or two entities, rather, the team form and the members form. So taking a look at these, it's at this point fairly simple and straightforward. We just have a name on the members and then over on team, we have uh, the team name. So it is uh, ready for us to create the relation. And if we go over here, just over to schema builder. So settings, schema builder, we can see that these are not related at all, but to relate them, we'll need the lookup field. And as mentioned, uh, the team itself isn't terribly concerned with um, the members, but the members are. So we'll go over to the form builder. 
And to create the relationship inside Zoho Creator, it is fairly straightforward. We just drag and drop the lookup field, and then we select the form uh, that we want to look up to. In this case, it's going to be the team. Now we're gonna head over to the whiteboard and I want to explain something uh, very shortly regarding the fields. Now in Zoho Creator, there is an important distinction to make. Now it's wor worth repeating that this field right here will be an ID, uh, which is a number. This will be, again, a lookup to the ID field. However, in Zoho Creator, it's not always going to show up as a number on the form. In fact, it almost never is. It, we usually choose something like name. And name here is the display field. Now, in Zoho Creator, it's going to look like the following. So in this case, uh, we can display uh, the team name at, and any of the system fields right here. For most cases, we'll choose something that is understandable because this is going to show up on the form by default. And again, this will not change any of the underlying data because again, the lookup field is actually a number. So we'll just push done. then essentially that is all we need to do. So if we go back to the application, we can access it. Let's create a few teams. So we'll say uh, team one, team two, team three, and then uh, members, uh, we'll say Jane is part of one, Joe, is part of one, Jen is part of team three, and so on and so forth. So if we look at the all members, we can see that we now have a nice one-to-many relationship. Now you might be asking why we are even concerned about this in the first place, and that's a good question. Uh, the short answer is, is because we want to allow the application to have some flexibility, allow it to scale, and allow changes to happen with uh, over time. So if we go over to edit this application, we weren't really concerned about um, entities um, and relationships. Like the other way to do it would be um, without these relationships, you could say member one, member two, etc. Now, you could obviously see the problem with this is that w one team might have one member, one team might have several different members, and you want these things to sit independently of each other. Because let's say uh, Jen goes from team one to team three. Well, then you'll have to go into two records. So we'll go over here. We'll go into uh, edit this and we would erase Jen off of member two and then go into member one and add the name there. Likewise, we only have a fixed amount of fields. Um, so you can see right away that this is an inappropriate way to um, handle it. Now, uh, conversely, if we go over to members, let's say we go over to Jen and decide that uh, she goes from team three to team one. It's as simple as just selecting that and updating it. And since uh, the relationship stays the same, but the lookup is a little bit different, all the changes are going to be tracked naturally and simply. Whether you already have a creator application, are looking to get started, or just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to get pointed in the right direction, always feel free to reach out to us at Function Dynamic by going to www.functiondynamic.com 
click the contact us link and fill in the get started form. Once filled in, you will automatically receive an email with a link to schedule a time that works best for you. 